Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys had a great night tonight, great St. Patrick's Day or whatever weekend, holiday weekend. Back to the grind. So hopefully we'll be getting a bunch of you guys back. So yeah, um, if you don't know, like I said, all these videos get posted on this subreddit. It's called DF Sports right here. I make updates with all of the news that comes out. There was no news today. People talk strategy here. It's a place, you know, if you can talk strategy, you can ask me questions. I'll always respond to you. Stuff like that. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely check that out. And then Twitter. My Twitter link will be, um, if you ever need to get a hold of me privately, you can do so on Twitter at ToryLangley1992 right there. So <clears throat> also, Discord link will be down below where I have in-depth content going over each slate. Player pools for cash, GPPs. I also do XFL in the Discord. We have people playing PGA. We have people playing NASCAR. We have potentially people playing MLB when it's coming up. We have people that play MMA. So 24-7 sports every day. Um, Discord link will be down below. And we've just been absolutely crushing the XFL. So like it's just been, it, it's it's been a little bink there. <clears throat> nice day there. A little... 3x date there it's just cash games have been amazing for the xfl it's it's just been great um there's more up there good days in nba as well so yeah um that'll be down below so going over my lineups from today it was a phenomenal day once again um <clears throat> Can't be stopped of late. Literally cannot be stopped. It's been absolutely amazing with what's happened the past week or two. I'm up like, I don't know, just look at my balance from like a week ago. I'm probably up like 2K now in a week. It's been, the heater is on. This is my XFL lineup for cash games. I went with the chalk, of course, obviously. Um, I was shocked that Cody, 30% of the field fitted Cody Latimer. 30% of the field faded Hakeem Butler. Just absolutely shocked by that. 40% of the field faded Ben DiNucci. Just, what are people doing? I, I, you tell me, what are people doing? I really don't know. I don't know. So, going over my NBA lineup. Um, the core that I had for today was, it was just a chalk core. Cole Anthony, Smash, Brandon Ingram, he did very well. Um, Paolo Benchero, he was fine. And then I had Trendon Watford as a core play, but he wasn't starting. So this was absolutely massive. I told that we told everyone Watford's not starting. Get off him right now. Get off him. Get to Zubach if you have the money. Pivot off him at all costs. Trendon Watford was still very, very popular. 40% owned. Massive, massive bust. So that helped a lot of us cash. Also, another one. This will give you, like, another benefit of being in Discord. Another thing. Where is it? Larry Nance. Larry Nance. I told everyone in Discord to not play Larry Nance. To not. Do not play Larry Nance today at this ownership. I shared in Discord a post. Let me see if I can find it. Scroll ahead if you don't want to see this. It's okay. Um, go to the breakdown, but... Um, let's see if it's up here. Give me one sec, I guess. Oh, slate started at six. Um, okay. As you can also see, the Discord is just very, very active. I posted this in Discord. Another perk. Nobody, nobody saw this. Nobody. Larry Nance, I'm playing through his ankle injury. Obviously, it's frustrating. I don't have much explosion. Can't jump too well, but I'm giving everything I have. I just want it to be available. The more time, the more time that goes on, the better I'll look and start to feel. He was massive chalk. All it took was five minutes of research. All, all it took. I'm not going to play a guy that can't jump. Who literally says he cannot jump. That's all it takes. I literally spend hours a day just researching random bullshit on Twitter. And it pays off. So, um, yeah. My lineup, obviously the core, um, was did very well. 
Um, and then I rounded it out with Kevin Porter Jr., um, Chris Boucher. Uh, very unfortunate there that Precious Achua was back in the rotation. And then I had Trenton Watford, and I had... Who did I have? I had Watford, and I had Anthony Simons. I went from Watford, Simons, to Nurkic, Zubac. That worked out in a huge, huge way. Um, helped me cast. So, great night overall. Hope you guys had a good night as well. Got a really, really good sl good six-game slate for tomorrow. I'm really excited for this one because I absolutely love this slate. So, Indiana at Charlotte. Two slow-paced, two fast-paced teams that go up against each other that don't play a ton of defense. We have Halburn out. We have Matherin questionable. We have Dorte questionable. We have Isaiah Jackson questionable. So, if everyone is in, I still really like Miles Turner at 7-3 in a phenomenal matchup. I know the rotation's been bad. He's been dealing with a ton of foul trouble, but I think we get normal minutes here as long as he can stay out of foul trouble. I really like targeting the Charlotte Hornets, um, any player going up against them as a big. So I like Miles Turner quite a bit. Buddy Heald, I like his ceiling for GPPs um, with no Halliburton. Now I'm hard, TJ, I think they're priced appropriately, especially if everyone's in. But in this in this environment, I think you can definitely still get to either of them. I probably wouldn't play both together. And then Jordan Nwora would strictly depend on Matherin, Dorte, Jackson. If they're in, I'm not playing Nwora at 5-4. That would also take Naismith out of play. Matherin himself, we would have to see if he's on a limit of some sort. Same with Chris Duarte, both ankle injuries. So, it's kind of going to be a wait-and-see approach here. But I will say, if they're out, then I feel more comfortable in Jordan Awara, who I think would start, play around 30 minutes. I think he'd be a pretty good play at 5-4. And then I'd feel even better about Nemhard, TD McConnell. Um, still like Buddy Heald, and then really like Miles Turner. So, just keep an eye on these three guys. Keep an eye on if they're going to be on the limit or not. That's going to be very, very important. So, Really good spot here for Charlotte as well. I like Rozier as a contrarian play in a pace-up spot. No Lamella Ball, so he's going to be the clear number one on this team. Probably not like a, you know, I, I don't think he'll get a ton of ownership tomorrow. We'll see. So more of a tournament-only play for me. But I still think he's a pretty solid play at sub 8K. I think Kelly Oubre has a very, very high ceiling given the matchups. Good rebounder as well. Should play close to 40 minutes as long as this game stays close. So I like the upside quite a bit on Rozier. Quite a bit on Oubre. Gordon Hayward seems like a pretty safe play to me at 5'9". Minutes on a downtrend of late. Have been involved in blowouts, but um, not looking to like Ross, run to roster him, but I'm okay with him as like a last man, last man in filler play. PDA Washington at 5'8". I don't mind it. Another play that's just like there for me, but I do like Nick Richards at 5'1". Um, got a bit unlucky with foul trouble last game and the blowout. I think we get close to 30 minutes here from, from Nick Richards at 5'1". Prices come down. I think the matchup is pretty good in this pace up spot. So I think Nick Richards looks like a pretty good play at that price tag. Dennis Smith Jr. at 5K still seems priced appropriately. Um, no issue if you want to go go there if you're going to do like a game stack. I think that's solid. Kai Jones will get the backup five at 3-4. He benefited last game from foul trouble for Nick Richards. Um, if more value doesn't open up, I could see it just because he's a good point per minute guy. But... Um, I don't know if we'll have to go there last game. We saw Sveen McKayluke, I believe, in the rotation, but eh, but I don't think I can do it. Let's move on to Chicago. So it's tough, tough spot here. So I'm not interested in DeRozan. I'm not interested in Levine. But I think there is a diamond in the rough here that no one is going to play tomorrow. And I think that is Nikola Vucevic. Just hear me out. Firstly, Chicago running a very, very tight rotation. Joel Embiid is horrible horrible against bigs that can shoot three-point shots so I think people are going to see the matchup just be completely scared to play Nikola Vucevic but I think the matchup given his skill sets is actually pretty good for him um so I'm really interested in, in a sub AK Vooch in GPPs that no one's going to play so if you want a diamond in the rough tomorrow who I actually think it's a better spot for him than people want to think or realize um, I think he could be a slate winner tomorrow. I do. Now, it's probably going to fail more often than not. He could still get into massive foul trouble. But, um, yeah, definitely think he's a pretty good GPP play just because no one's going to play him. And I think the matchup is better than people think. 
Um, we do have Caruso back, I believe. Uh, he's questionable. If he's out, then um, I think you can get the guys like Kobe White, Patrick Williams. Um, Patrick Williams, I don't think it's a usage bump anyway, but the minutes might be a little bit safer. Io started last time Caruso was out, would only play him if he starts. And then Kobe White would be the ceiling play of the bunch. I'd probably prefer him the most in GPPs, but would have all interest in all three if Caruso's out. If Chris is in, then I, I don't think I can get to any of these value guys. We saw Patrick Beverly have a massive game last game, but that definitely feels like chasing to me. On to the Sixers. So, okay spot here. I think Embiid's a fine contrarian sped up on the slate. Um, definitely ranks below a lot of the under other sped ups to me. Same with James Harden. And then everyone else is definitely priced up appropriately or a little bit overpriced with everyone back so it, it's really just Harden and beat as contrarian spend ups for me on the Sixers on to the Minnesota Timberwolves so we have Ant questionable I don't think he plays here we have Rudy Gobert questionable I'm fully expecting him to play and we have Nas Reed questionable not sure on his status so Assuming Ant's out, I really don't think he plays here. So we're going to go over to assuming he is out. So assuming he is out and Rudy Gobert plays, I don't like the matchup at all. So I'll probably pass here. Knicks are very, very tough against opposing bigs. I think they're the best in the league at defending bigs. Kyle Anderson um, probably would be the go-to guy on offense. He'll stuff the statue as well. I think he looks like a pretty safe play at that price tag. But I would like Mike Conley at 5.5K. I think they went easy on his minutes this game just because he played freaking 46 minutes last game, I believe, in double overtime. So I like Mike Conley quite a bit as a bounce back candidate if Anthony Edwards is out. And I think McDaniel, McDaniels makes for a pretty solid play at 5K. Um, we've, seen, we've seen his minutes uptick with no Anthony Edwards, and he's had a very, very solid role with no Anthony Edwards as well. So McDaniels. I think it's a solid play if Ant's out. Torian Prince started last game. If he starts again, I think he's a solid value. You can't look to this game. you got to have short-term memory in DFS. Complete outlier game. Shot 1-7. of seven. So, um, I think he's solid if he starts with Ant out. Um, I'm not going to get to NAW. His role didn't really change too much. He struggled. Got benched. Um, and I don't like anything else on the Timberwolves. So, let's move on to the Knicks. So, we do have Brunson back, so that's going to take Randall at 9-2 out of play for me. He can still flash a ceiling, but with Brunson back in this offense, he definitely takes a hit. Now, Jalen Brunson at sub 8K, and I expect him to play pretty full minutes here. I do like quite a bit. He is just way too cheap, especially if we get those full minutes, which I expect him to play full minutes here. So, I do like Brunson quite a bit. Quickly overpriced. RJ definitely overpriced with uh, Brunson back. Same with um, Josh Hart, but... Mitchell Robinson, 4.5K. I always like playing guys like Mitchell Robinson for GPPs just because they have like 50 fantasy point upside and nobody likes to play him. Now, I know the minutes have been pretty shit of late, but if you get a game where he plays like 25 to 30 minutes and goes for like a double-double with like five blocks, he's going to blow this price tag out of the water. So um, I think he's an interesting GPP play, especially at 4.5K. Not scared of Gobert at all. And I don't like anything else. So let's move on to this next game. Dallas and Memphis. So, got to keep an eye on Luka. Got to keep an eye on Kyrie. If they're both in, I'm staying away from Dallas. Luka would be overpriced. Kyrie would be overpriced. You can't get to Wood. Tim Hardaway Jr. would be overpriced. Green, Hardy, Bullock, Powell. They would be all, all out of play for me. Sorry, guys. Um, if Luka's out and Kyrie is in, it's going to depend on starting lineup. It really is. So, I don't think I heard anyone mention this, but the last game, they experimented with a bigger lineup. And we got news before lock that Jason Kidd was going to experiment with the bigger lineup. And what they did, they started, I believe, Maxi Kleba, and they started, I want to say Dwight Powell. I think it was Kleba and Powell together. Let me just take a look. Um, let me let me just make sure. I, I, believe, I believe I'm right, though. Uh, I am. So they started Kleba, they started Pal. We saw Christian Wood play 34 minutes. So if they're going to experiment with more bigger lineups of late, and we get that starting lineup of Kleba and Pal next to each other, I do think that could help out Christian Wood here again. Now I don't know if we play 34, if he plays 34 minutes again. I would only do this if Kyrie's out, and they start that bigger lineup. Um, but it definitely certainly would help him with Kleba and Powell starting. 
So I would have interest in Wood if they do that bigger lineup again. If they don't do a bigger lineup and they start, like, you know, just Pal as a big, I would not touch Wood. Because then I think there's a better chance for his minutes to be shit like they were before. Kyrie, I would like quite a bit at 10K. His, his role without Luka is just elite. Tim Hardaway Jr. would be playable. I'm not going to get to Hardy. Green, I think, would be priced about right. I'm not going to go to any. Uh, Kleba, if he starts, I think would be an okay value player, 3-4. Um, but not going to be running to roster anyone else. Um, if if they're both out, then we'll just have to monitor things. We will. Then I'm going to like Hardy. Then I'm going to like Josh Green. Then I'm going to like Tim Hardaway Jr. Then we're going to have to monitor starting lineup. Then Reggie Bullock would be playable at 4-7. And then whatever they do with the starting lineup, we'll see. Um, but... I'm pretty positive one of them is going to play. All right, John Moran out, Steven Adams out, Jaron Jackson Jr. is questionable. Um, if Jaron plays, I like him in this matchup. Dallas has been getting destroyed by Biggs. His role has been, he has actually benefit, benefited the most on this team without John Moran um, usage-wise and fantasy point per minute-wise. So I still like him even at this price tag if he plays. Bain ties, I think, are now getting to the price points to where I think they're appropriately priced, but still solid plays to me. Xavier Tillman, minutes went back up of late. I don't know if we see that again, so your guess is as good as mine. So he's purely only a GPP play for me. Dylan Brooks, a black hole. All he's going to do is shoot. Up to you if, if you want to play him and if he hits his shots. Luke Kennard, been a big part of this rotation, but no John Moran. I think he's a fine dart throw for GPPs. And I won't go to anyone else. But if Jaren's out, that changes a lot. Then I like Bane a lot. Then I like Ties quite a bit. Then I like Xavier Tillman quite a bit. Then I assume Aldama would start at 3-7. I would really like him for value. Then I, we might even see more run for the GOAT Kenneth Lofton Jr. Might be a 150 max large field tournament chart. Who is a phenomenal point per minute guy. So, um, I would only do that in like 150 lineups. Sprinkle in some kind of... Can, is he still with the team? God damn it. No, wait. Oh, okay. That was 225. Just make sure he's still with the team. But if Jaren's out, I wouldn't hate sprinkling sprinkling in like 2% Kenneth Lofton Jr. Because if he gets like 15 minutes, which I feel like it's highly unlikely. We'll see. But if he does, he could break the slate at the mid price. But... Um, just ignore that. This is a, a super, super large field tournament dart. But yeah, would really like Bane, would like Tyus, would like Tillman. Brooks would be play. Brooks would look good. And then would really like Aldama. Um, so would like a lot on this Memphis side if those guys are out. So on to Golden State. We have Looney questionable. Why is Steph Curry sub 10K against the Houston Rockets? Can someone explain to me what DraftKings is doing? Steph looks amazing. Steph looks amazing. Clay's playable. Pool's playable. Like the spot here for Draymond Green. I think he's solid. Dante, like the spot a lot for him as well. I think he's playable. Um, Kavon Looney, don't like the price. They're going to start Draymond at the five as well, so hard to go there. Um, Kaminga played a lot last game too. I don't know if we get 30 minutes again from him. I don't know if someone benefited from foul trouble or not. Um, but... Would feel more comfortable with Kaminga if Looney's out. I think you could go there if he's out. But if Looney's in, hard for me to go there. And wouldn't like too much else. But I think the main three guys here look pretty good in a phenomenal matchup. Let's move on to Houston. So I'm going to keep hammering it home. The main guys are playing massive, massive minutes right now. So with that being said, I always like targeting Golden State. I think Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green both look like good GPP plays for me. I think I'm perfectly fine with 6.7K Sengen. Jabari Smith's a bit overpriced, but he's playing huge minutes. KJ Martin, he's playing pretty big minutes as well. Seems like a safe play to me. Tari Eason, minutes on a downtrend, but he'll play around 20 minutes. No issue if you want to go there for value. Seems fine to me. Jay Sean Tate was the worst chalk of the night tonight. Fine value. Don't love it. And I won't go to anyone else. Let's talk about Sacramento. Last game here, guys. Sabonis has just been phenomenal. He's been phenomenal. Now you have a phenomenal matchup. So I, I love Sabonis. Steph Sabonis, my two, two top spend-ups on the slate. I don't, I don't even think it's really close. So 
love Sabonis. I, I really like Fox, too, at 8.2K. That price tag just seems a bit absurd. I don't care that he's been bad of late. 8.2K is just disrespectful. So, I really like both the top two guys here for Sacramento. Malik Monk, I would only consider if Kevin Herter is out. But even then, it's not a guarantee that his, he's going to get a minutes bump from Kevin Herter being out. It really depends on how he plays. So, um... Definitely in play if Kevin Herter's out, but if he's going to be popular, that's the easiest fade of my life. Um, if Herter's in, I don't like the wings. If Herter's out, then I think Keegan Murray's solid. I think Harris Barnes is solid. They started Kessler Edwards. Uh, you couldn't pay me to play Kessler Edwards. You saw Terrence, Dav Terrence Davis would be playable even off the bench, but um, I don't think his I don't think his minutes are secure. I, I really don't. Um, I don't know what they'll do, but he would be playable if Kevon is out. So I think that'll do it for Sacramento. Let's move on to Utah. So we have marketing questionable. This news is massive. If he is in, I like Mark going up against Sacramento, even at this price tag. Um, I think Walker Kessler is okay. THT would be fine, but would prefer Mark out. Kylie Olenek would be priced about right. I'm not going to go to anyone else, though. So let's go over if Markkanen is out. If Markkanen is out, then Walker Kessler gets a boost. I, I think it would be okay at 7K. I think okay to solid, but Taylor Horton Tucker would have to lead, lead this team. Just look who, who he's going to be starting with. It's probably going to be a THT. It's probably going to be a Baji. It's probably going to be Kelly Olenek. It's going to be Walker Kessler. And then if I had to guess, it would be the Italy Olympic legend Fontaceo. He's going to be playing alongside four very low usage guys. So, I mean, fire up all the tail and horn Tucker if Laurie Markin is out. And I would even like Kelly Olenek at 5'7". He gets a pretty big boost. They might even run some offense through him as well. So, I would really like THT. I would like Kelly Olenek quite a bit. Walker Kessler would be okay. Um, and then Agbaji will have to play a ton of minutes, like a ton of minutes. I think he'd be a solid value. I don't think I could play Fontaceo. I, I, I mean, we'll see. Uh, he, he would be fine, but um, this game was definitely an outlier. Huge, huge outlier. Um, and then Chris Dunn, I think, might have to play more. Um, I, I really don't know. If they do like a lineup where they start Chris Dunn and slide Tail and Horton to, Tucker to the two, then I really, really like Chris Dunn, but... Um, we'll see what they do with the starting lineup, but that news is absolutely massive. So hope you guys had a great night tonight. I, myself, it's been a phenomenal week. We've been crushing. Discord link will be down below. I'll talk to you all tomorrow.